You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with the members of the Vancouver band Atavistia. Their new album, Cosmic Warfare, is out now. Dwayne, Matt, Max, thank you so much for taking time to meet me, and welcome to The Pit. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having having us. I like to begin with people's origin stories. So if you guys mind going around the circle, and this is a nice way for people who, if they listen to this with just audio, they can match your voice to who you are. So just give a short introduction, say your name, say what you do in the band and that sort of a thing. Well, I'm Matt or my stage name, Matthias, and I'm the founder of Atavistia back in 2016 is when I wanted to actually start getting members involved take it out of a bedroom project <laughs> um yeah i'm uh max sepulveda uh i'm the drummer of Adavistia. and um yeah i joined in i think it was november of 2019 but uh yeah they needed some they needed blast beats so you know that's that's my thing so you know <laughs> it was a good opportunity and i'm happy i joined <laughs> Um, my name's Wayne. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Um, I don't know. I was playing bands back in Australia, and then one of the bands I was playing with uh, more or less folded. Um, so I decided to move to Canada. Um, and I actually wasn't going to pursue music, um, but someone I met recommended I hit up Matt and join Advisio. Um, I listened to, I think it was Beyond the Meadows of Fire, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I should do this. <laughs> And yeah, I've pretty much been in the band, I think officially November 2018, but Matt and I were talking more or less as soon as I landed, like in June. Yeah. So, yeah. And Matt, you sort of started this band off all on your own, sort of as a solo project, and it's evolved over the years. Uh, You started it, you started writing that early stuff back when you were about 17, 18 years old, right? Yeah, pretty much. I think, yeah, 18 when I wrote my first song <laughs> hmm. so it's, it's been about a decade don't remind me <laughs> <laughs> what i wanted to ask was just when you go back and you listen to the earlier recordings and then you see how, the progression that the band has made sonically what are some of the biggest differences that you find the things that have changed the most uh maturity production skill and did I say maturity? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was something you were talking about after Winterway came out. Uh, you were saying that how you wanted to get kind of a more organized approach towards production. Uh, so on Cosmic Warfare, how did that all go down? Was it a more organized promo- approach in your mind? Yeah, it's a good question. It's after the winter way, I kind of went through a little hiatus with myself and I didn't know what my future be held for music, but then I just kind of hunkered down in 2022 and so I became a member of the URM and just learned a lot from, from that about mixing and production and how to record properly, gain staging, blah, 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 blah. But it was just a night and day difference in my production work and how to approach songs, how to approach writing songs. Yeah, I feel like it's gone <laughs> only uphill. Oh, here he comes. Oh, here we go. It was updating apparently. There he is. This is what he looks like on stage. Just the name. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there, Dalton? Can you hear us? Hello. One second. Perfect. All right, I'll come back around to introducing you in a second, Dalton. I just wanted to get back. Let's go back to something you were just talking about, Matt, because I don't think a lot of our listeners know what URM is. Oh, it's the Unstoppable Recording Machine. Is that correct, Wayne? Yeah, Unstoppable Recording Machine. Yeah, I haven't been a member for a while, so I kind of forgot the name. But it's a, it's a, it's a school on how to properly produce metal songs. You don't really see that. You can't really take those courses in university. You can take courses on classical, jazz, even blues, but anything to do with metal is just off the table. So I think Dwayne actually recommended it to me. Yeah, uh, that's what started my audio 
journey, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. Started. So I just kind of fell fell into that and obsessed for a few months. Learned a lot. Even for more professionally uh, active sound engineers, heavy metal is something that they just don't have a grasp on. Yeah. So we were just joined by Dalton, the second guitarist in the band. Dalton, we'd like you to just introduce yourself so that people listening to this with just audio, could you just say your name and what you do in the band? Yeah, I'm uh, Dalton, nicknamed Dale. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I uh, play guitar and, uh, you know, just kind of do whatever the guys need me to do when I need to do it. <laughs> uh, and how did you meet Matt? Uh, so funny story, kind of long story, but I can do like the short version. Matt and me were both in like completely different bands. Like he was like in a hardcore metalcore kind of band. And I was doing like guitar tech for my buddy's hardcore band. And uh, <clears throat> they played a show at the Hindenburg in Vancouver, like, I don't know, like 2016 or 17, something like that. And uh, so we were like the band that I was with at the time was at that show, same with Matt's band. And he did like a, uh, like a Winter Sun warm up riff. Okay, so my dog's being a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he did a Winter Sun warm up riff, and I was like, at the sound check, I'm like, oh, I know that song. It, you know, it's like Winter Madness or something like that, or Battle Against Time. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but, you know, then we got to talking after the sound check, and he's like, I've been playing that thing for years, and like, no one's even mentioned it ever. It was the like, killer riff. The killer riff, that's right. Uh -huh. The killer riff. And so we just got to talking, and then, like, you know, about a year later, I ended up moving down to Vancouver to join the band. And uh, I want to get into the bit of the writing process for you guys, because obviously with this band, it all began with Matt and a lot of the music has been written by Matt over the years. But slowly over time, you guys have been probably bringing your own influences, bringing your own tastes and just getting your own ideas out. So what is the writing process been like for Cosmic Warfare? How did that all feel? How did that all go down? It was still kind of the same process as before. Like I'll, I'll write the main structure of the songs just to get an idea of how they'll go then i send the demos to the all the, all the other guys and then they give their input we you know find a common ground on parts that they come up with yeah a big, i think a big difference between this album and the last album was matt actually because we started using discord a lot more mm -hmm. and matt like with his like his writing process he was like essentially just like He'd message one of us and be like, hey, I'm working on this. Do you want to come like give me your opinions? So it was a, a, like very collaborative in the sense of him being like, this is like, like you know, 90% of a song, but give me all your thoughts on what I got so far kind of thing, right? And then we would, we would either change stuff, add stuff, or, you know, it would just be a lot more collaborative this time around. And it's taken a long time for Matt to just kind of be like, I trust you guys to like that your opinion's actually good and you, it's it's been good for I think for all of us we really like yeah, how so. the process is because it makes it easier for us to just kind of jump in when he needs us. Hence the maturity comment I made earlier. Hmm. <laughs> With the Winter Way when that album was released was right near at the beginning of the shit show. It was like uh, literally at the height of COVID. It was like April yeah. 2020, yeah. we released mm -hmm. it. Everything was shutting down. We had like cancel all these tours yeah. that we had planned and it was just yeah. the worst, yeah. absolute worst. So as you guys were putting the final touches on that album, you knew that you were putting it out into a world where you weren't going to be able to tour or perform any of those songs. Well, yeah, the whole entire package basically was assembled and all the PR was like planned out and we had, basically we had to just go because like we announced the album release date just as people were talking about COVID and then it was released right when everything was locking down so we didn't really have a choice <laughs> so now with cosmic warfare it was the opposite you, you you're you were putting the final touches on this album knowing that you're able to go out into the world and actually perform these songs live did that completely kind of in your minds like change the final process for you well, it it, it so just true. gave me the motivation and love to really pursue it. And what happened after the winter way, you know, the lockdowns and everything, I just kind of lost interest of music for a little bit. It was just like, this is the worst timing that anything could happen. And I don't know, it was just super depressing around that time. But like you said, it was the complete opposite this time around, and it's been nothing but Know, go 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 and i love being busy i don't like being i don't like having nothing 
<laughs> and just to add to that, that too, we like our writing process too, it's like pretty far out. So when uh, COVID actually happened, like a couple months later, Matt had already written like a song for like yeah. one or two songs for this next album. And then over the course of COVID, he ended up writing the entire album, essentially the outline of what it was going to be. So then it was just us a couple of years of like just refining it, right? I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier, but we already have like two more albums basically written. No, we haven't brought that up yet. I I wanted to bring that up. That was actually (laughs) a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we can. All right. This is the standard Max. He likes to, he's got cell phone internet all the time, so he cuts out. All right, all right. Yeah, no, I, I was actually just about to bring that up. So you actually have written the next two albums? Two albums and an EP. Two well, albums Matt, and an well, EP. Matt, Matt has the uh, outlines of two albums and an EP. Okay, so that hasn't uh, really gone through the whole um, organic process of getting mixed with you guys and you guys putting in your own ideas yet? Nope. No, I, not it, yet. The EP is starting to, um, but yeah. And the, the I, EP I, is actually, very different. you know, <laughs> we should probably make an announcement of the EP before this comes out, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, that it's a good kick in the butt to actually announce it, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've got like, other things to announce that are more important. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, this EP, it none of it existed like two months ago, and I was I was just really bored one day, and I tuned my guitar down from D standard to drop D flat, and I'm like, hmm, he would should I come up with for this? And then you know, the rest is history. I just kind of pump, pumped out X amount of songs in like yeah two months and yeah i'm super happy with how they sound they're way different than anything we've done before and it's just going to be a good little like teaser into what we can also do before we jump back into you know cosmic warfare style and with cosmic warfare and the winter way they were kind of like a a soft concept so to speak with lyrically and musically uh, sharing some ideas. Does any of that kind of carry over into the EP at all, or is this kind of like a whole new thing? I'd say lyrically it does, but musically, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. It's like usually like whatever thing we're working on. So, like, you know, basically every album you can tell they all sound like it's like a self contained thing. Like each album sounds like its own album. So that, that still carries forward, but it's like, you know, a different concept this time. And we don't, like Matt always likes to say, we don't like to put like too like hard of a, like a, this is the concept because we like our fans to listen to the lyrics, listen to the music, come up with their own interpretations. Absolutely. All right, let's go once around the circle. Everybody say your favorite song from Cosmic Warfare. Oh, I'll start. Fine. Yeah, you can yeah. say, I mean, the circle might be weird. I'm, like I'm, pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the circle is going to be the same song. It's uh, Divine Destruction, yeah. Yeah, Divine Destruction. <laughs> So it's a consensus. Um, but you Matt. Yeah, I'm not sure. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard to pick a favorite because I think my favorite is Forgotten Silence. Mm. But we yeah, I was gonna say Forgotten Silence too. But we haven't we haven't played that one yet. So ones that we have played, oh, probably we... Divine Destruction. If we're talking about played though, like the, my favorite song to play live at the moment is Ethereal. Like, oh yeah, oh my god, <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah, Divine Destruction and Forgotten Science is like not even like a millimeter away. That's how close they are to me. I just like yeah. Divine Destruction because of how much like energy that song has. Yeah. Dwayne, you said you like to play Ethereal. What is it about that song that uh, you like playing? Uh, it's just catchy, full of hawks. Um, it's just fun watching a crowd when we play that song. It's just great. It feels good. Um, yeah, it's like a, it's, it's got... like a more folk metal song, right? Yeah, so... and like I don't even like folk metal that much, and like that song is just great. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun to play. But divine is just yeah, brain melting. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, divine is it's pretty fun live. Cosmic Warfare, I really like playing that song, but sometimes live with the adrenaline, it feels too slow. Yeah, <laughs> even though it's like so fast. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have to double take every now and then. I'm like, oh, wait, there's the click. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it, it must be hard for you guys to decide on a set list since all of your songs are so long. Like if you just pick one song, that might mean you might not get to play another song and you, you kind of have to really choose, right? Like, and it kind of it kind of works itself out that way because our mm -hmm. set lists, a lot of the time they're shorter. It's like, well, we can really only pick two or three songs. So we generally just pick the most popular ones yeah. of those songs. And it, it just so happens that a lot of the times they're still fun to play. So we don't really feel too bad about it. But uh, mm. more recently, we've played a little bit longer sets. So we've been adding, like, we've got, like, a reworked version of one of the songs off the first album, Beyond the Meadows of Fire, which is, it's honestly one of the funnest songs to play live because it's, yeah. structure-wise, it's very simple, and the riffs are very simple. So we just go hard and, like, headbang the yeah. whole time. Just gives us a break in the middle of the set. It's great. Yeah. Bef before we go into the wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, not so much of a break break for max but no. max, oh, yeah. max never gets i was gonna say actually it's funny because i think you you had asked you know what the hardest song is to play live but for me i think it would be through the hollow raven's eyes mm. and it's it, because it feels slow live and so when i'm playing it it's like it, it feels like i can't you know move that slow even though it's still you know kind of it's a like a weird it's a weird song tempo for you but it's just yeah it's just totally different when you actually play it live at least with drums you yeah. know maybe not maybe not so much with guitar i find that song one of the hottest songs on bass for us for sure yeah, like, we, this, me, and, this, me and Dwayne kind of went crazy yeah, writing bass on that one it's kind of there's a lot of fiddly bass on that song as well as dawn <laughs> there's a lot of fiddly yeah. bass and dawn so looking at the lineup we were kind of talking about this earlier there's been a lot of really great bands announced for the festival is there any other bands that you saw that got announced that you're actually excited excited to go see uh i'd love to see Fallujah again i haven't seen them in like probably eight years um i love Wormwich. i haven't seen them in a while um zenith passage i'm really digging their new stuff so i think those three will be sick yeah definitely Wormwich. yeah definitely yeah i've always wanted to see veil of math and strikers mm. just oh man strikers a good time <laughs> yeah the zenith passage for me yeah i wanted to ask you guys a little bit about the artwork on the albums because it's hard to find any credit to the artists or who they were and stuff like that and just oh, really? a little bit of, what's that oh really you couldn't find any credits for that I, I couldn't find them on Bandcamp, but uh oh, i'm sure they're out okay. there somewhere but yeah. uh, like for Cosmic Warfare, let's just kind of talk about the art on that. Like, what was it about the art that spoke to you? Um, well, we wanted that bleak yet majestic look for the album cover. And yeah, we got Adam Burke, who worked like Unleash the Archers, and many other great bands. We really wanted like a hand painted style. And yeah, kind of communicated with him for a bit and yeah so you shared ideas back and forth before he showed you anything yeah it was a weird process with him compared to a lot of other artists yeah like the for the winter way it was it was equally painful but in a different way because we had uh, uh we again. had yeah we had zenwa from neo blue Vascaris, um but you know at that time like neo were touring relentlessly and Every time I've dealt with him, it's been a very long, drawn out process. <laughs> um, so it took a long time to get that yeah. art, but he did a lot of reviews, like revisions for us, which was nice to finally get yeah. what, we, what we really wanted. So yeah. it, I think Winterway looks really good. And Adam Burke was kind of a weird because he kind of draws like a pencil, like a sketch on like pencil and paper, and it looks god awful. Like it looks terrifying <laughs> when you see the sketch. <laughs> and you're just like, this is going to be something cool. And then he, he does like a rough kind of like paint and you get to see it come together and it actually looks really good and then you can make a couple little changes but it's hand painted so there's only so much you can do i'm mm -hmm. um, getting down to the last couple of minutes here i just wanted to ask you guys uh is there any shout outs that you would like to make out to our listeners anyone you'd like to give a shout out to all the boys in aether realm they've always been uh good to us and Jake helped us out on do some backing vocals on Ethereal Wanderer, and yeah, hopefully one day we'll share this with them. It will happen. Yeah, same with Oceans of Slumber. It was mm. nice talk. Like we talked to them all the times. It's nice that we we got to see them at a show a couple months ago. They came up here to Van, and it was it was pretty cool hanging out with them. They opened up. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you already forgot. <laughs> I said we. I said we played a show with them, didn't I? Oh, I, I saw them. Same thing. Fair enough. And is there any advice that you guys would give to an aspiring mus musician? Ignore the people that tell you you sound like a certain band because they're gonna just have to deal with that eventually <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Just enjoy enjoy the compliment while you can. Yeah, and, and you know, don't let bad comments ruin your love for what you're doing because no matter who you are, what you're writing, you're going to get bad comments. Just learn. Just got to take those with a bucket full of salt. Like, yeah, a bucket full of salt. Bucket full of salt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to wrap this up now. If you, is there anything else that you guys would like to let our listeners know? Well, we have a we have a pretty big announcement coming up on Monday, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, yeah, I think that's all I want to reveal at the moment. Yeah, and yeah. if anyone's going to Armstrong, we'll we'll see you there. Awesome. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with the members of the band Ada Vistia from Vancouver. Their new album, Cosmic Warfare, is out now. Don't miss them at the Armstrong Metal Fest. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and take care. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks. See ya.